Everybody get out of here! Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hero plans ruined by morons. Shooting at the lights. They're going after the lights. For this list, we'll be looking at premeditated attempts by a protagonist to achieve a specific goal that are foiled by a thoughtless other party. We're not necessarily saying these morons are always dumb, but they definitely made a stupid decision here. What perfect schemes of yours would have worked if not for meddling dunderheads? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Maintaining a Secure Shelter Dawn of the Dead Amid a zombie apocalypse, survivors Steven, Peter, and Fran managed to take refuge in a shopping mall. He'll never get through there. Enough of them will. And it ain't just them things we got to worry about. Although director George Romero opined that filming in the mall was hell, the three characters enjoyed an oasis of safety and modern convenience. That is, until a biker gang led by Tom Savini's Blades crashed the party. So what do you think? Go hit him now or tonight? Advertising to zombies far and wide, they whooped, hollered, and killed for sport all the way to the mall gates, which they broke wide open. Despite the satisfaction of watching idiots YOLO their way to a gruesome end while bleeding bright 3M brand stage blood, their ludicrous and over-the-top antics really stretch credulity. Not only do they disturb the peace, but what type of clown gets a blood pressure reading surrounded by the undead? After the place, they don't care about us. Number 9. Talking Down Gene X-Men The Last Stand The struggle between Magneto's Brotherhood of Mutants and humans escalated at the Alcatraz Island facility, where the military had weaponized a mutant cure. Calm down, calm down. To make matters worse, Magneto recruited the Phoenix-possessed Jean Grey, who tended to murder anyone in her business. Although Jean could have probably used an exorcist or a nap, the X-Men were determined to appeal to her good side to talk her down. It's over, Jean. It's over. Unfortunately, a derpy group of grunts decided to piss off the mutant goddess, resulting in almost everyone getting disintegrated by Phoenix Rage instead. The abrupt attack on Jean also makes it hard to tell, were they soldiers or NPCs? In any case, it really makes us shake our heads. What have I done? Number 8. Burning the Bird a Bug's Life In Aesop's fable, the slacker grasshopper begs the ant for food and is coldly rejected. Not so on Ant Island, where mob boss Hopper extorted food from residents. So where is it? Where's my food? Though most ants kept their heads down, Flick had other ambitions. He and his fellow ants built an Angry Bird facsimile to scare off Hopper and faced with a new pecking order. It almost worked. Let's get out of here! Sadly, no one told punchy circus flea P.T. about the ruse, and with a daring assault, the little ringmaster set the bird mock-up on fire, ruining the hoax. This led to Flick being publicly beaten. Ouch. We do have to admit, though, if this blunder wasn't so painful, his boldness was actually impressive. Whose idea was this? Huh? Number 7. Sitting This One Out – The Purge James Sandon thought he played his cards right as he and his family settled into their wealthy, gated community that night. Honey, this food is so good. Isn't it amazing? Not one carb. Great. Not one. Despite the patriotism of the new founding fathers and all the social hype, something about an anything is legal including murder holiday just didn't strike him as a fun family event. No harm in sitting this one out. Unless, of course, your teenage son Charlie disobeys strict lockdown orders, disables the security system, and lets in a desperate stranger. Come here! Let's go! This way! Come on! 
this wasn't Charlie's first purge, so why he thought it would be a good idea is anyone's guess. Let's see, safety or home invasion by Charles Manson-inspired killers? Terrible choice, kid. You are so grounded. Where's the man? I, I don't know. I don't understand. Who is he? Why did you let him in our home? Number six, restoring power. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. After a simian lab virus decimates humanity, a small group of survivors, led by Malcolm, aim to work with Caesar, the Ape King, to restore a hydroelectric dam near San Francisco. Trust. Carver, a former water worker, seemed a good fit, if it weren't for him being a paranoid bigot who blamed apes for societal collapse. After reflexively shooting an ape, he was told not to bring weapons. But again, he was found with a gun, pointed at Caesar's son. Keep it in your pants, dude. Said no guns. It's really a miracle humans and apes could make any progress with this guy around. There's certainly a bit of guilty pleasure when Carver finally gets fired by both groups, then retired. Great resume, but wrong fit. Number 5. Retrieving the Magic Lamp Aladdin Oh, wise Sultan, how may I serve you? <laughs> Abu had a dubious rap sheet involving theft from circus goers and stealing food with street rascal Aladdin. Abu even stole audience hearts as part of the first animated feature film to earn a half a billion dollars. Total kleptomaniac. He's got a sword! Hey, you idiots! So when Aladdin faced the giant angry tiger mouth in the middle of the desert and it growled instructions not to touch anything but the lamp, Abu would seem like the last guy to bring for the mission. Sure, he can't resist touching the forbidden treasure, causing all hell to break loose. Such a bad monkey, Abu. Abu! No! <laughs> Number 4. Calling in reinforcements. Die Hard. New York detective John McClane had a rough visit with his estranged wife, Holly, at her corporate workplace in LA. In other words, you thought she wasn't gonna make it out here and she'd come crawling up back to you, so why bother to pack, right? <laughs> Like I said, you're very fast, Argon. After killing one of Mastermind Hans Gruber's henchmen and radioing for backup, the operator barely lifted a finger. Lone responder Sergeant Powell saw nothing unusual until John dropped a corpse on his car. Everything here's okay. Over. But nobody has me to let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. SWAT totally fumbled their attack on Gruber, so the FBI took over, shutting down the power. It was just what Hans wanted, giving him access to a priceless vault. The frustrating lack of competence at every turn certainly heightened the stakes and the sense of isolation we feel for John's situation. As McLean's yippee ki bravado demonstrates, Sometimes, if you want something done right, you just gotta do it yourself. They got the universal terrorist playbook and they're running it step by step. Number 3. Taking the Infinity Gauntlet Avengers Infinity War Through newfound teamwork, the Avengers and Guardians successfully subdued Thanos. Victory was at their fingertips. I thought you'd be hard to catch. For the record, this is my plan. Not so strong now, huh? Unfortunately, Peter Quill realized his Green Queen, Gamora, had been sacrificed by the Mad Titan for the Soul Stone. Stark and Spider-Man had almost wrestled the Infinity Gauntlet away from Thanos when Star-Lord pistol-whipped the big purple meanie right out of Mantis' trance. Okay, Quill, you gotta cool it right now, you understand? Don't, don't, don't engage, we almost got this off! This led to Thanos defeating them and snapping away half of all life in the universe. Fans still debate Peter's ultimate blame. Who do you believe, Doctor Strange or director Joe Russo, who said, had Quill not done that, the movie might have ended right there. Regardless, it made for a compelling story arc audiences loved, and the first superhero flick to gross over two billion worldwide. Number 2. 
Number 2. Handing Off the Ransom The Big Lebowski Jeffrey the Dude Lebowski wanted a new rug after a home invader peed on his, mistaking him for a wealthy magnate of the same name. Your name's Lebowski, Lebowski. Your wife is Bunny. My, my, my wife, Bunny? Do you see a wedding ring on my finger? The millionaire then asked the dude to deliver ransom money, believing his trophy wife was kidnapped. But when bowling buddy and nom vet Walter Sobchak tagged along, he revealed a surprising unhinged plot at the 11th hour to give the kidnappers a bag of dirty undies instead. What the hell is this? My dirty undies, dude. Laundry. The whites. Walter, I'm sure there's a reason you brought your dirty undies. Man. That's right, dude. The weight. The ringer cannot look empty. As that scheme failed, headstrong Walter improvised with face-palming bombast in one of this cult favorite's defining moments. John Goodman's convincing performance of an absurd character obliviates any rancor we have for Walter's buffoonery. Although he momentarily ruined the dude's chill, we got bound up in stitches, and ultimately, the dude abides. Walter, I love you, but sooner or later you're gonna have to face the fact you're a goddamn moron. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Keeping Bad Spirits Locked Up Ghostbusters Maybe Vankman should have let New York government stooge Walter Peck examine their ghost storage facility once he used the magic word. What is the magic word, Mr. Vankman? Please. For when the EPA inspector returned, it was with law enforcement and a personal vendetta to shut down the Ghostbusters operation. Spangler, Vankman, and a city worker warned of potential danger, but he insisted. I'm warning you, turning off these machines would be extremely hazardous. I'll tell you what's hazardous. You're facing federal prosecution for at least a half a dozen environmental violations. Now either you shut off these beams or we shut them up for you. Forced to shut off containment, they plunged the city into full poltergeist infestation. Letting things get personal made Peck a rash, vindictive antagonist. William Atherton's portrayal made us love to hate him especially when the busybody's action allowed the return of the demigod Zool and the Stay Puft Destructor. Almost destroying the Big Apple must have left a bitter taste. Luckily, Peck had a sweet marshmallow chaser. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.